Welcome back to the Astro Park, everyone. My name is Koisi Aqua, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of all the steps that I take to photograph a planet. I'm in the park right now, and all of my equipment is set up. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. One of the important factors of planetary astrophotography is choosing your location. If you talk to any seasoned planetary astrophotographer, they'll tell you these three words, location, location, location. This is because we're trying to minimize the effects of what's known as the astronomical seeing conditions. So to use an analogy, imagine yourself looking down at the bottom of a swimming pool. If the water is nice and steady, you can see clearly down to the bottom. However, if somebody jumps into the pool, it creates that ripple effect and you can't see clearly to the bottom anymore. The same thing is happening in the atmosphere as the different layers of air are swirling around at different speeds. And this is what's known as the astronomical seeing conditions. And this can cause the planets to appear a little bit blurry. So usually the best places to do planetary astrophotography is down south as close to the equator as possible because the planets rise nice and high up in the sky, therefore minimizing the effects of the seeing conditions. However, if you're somebody like me, I don't have that luxury, so I have to do the best with what I've got. So in my location, where I am in the Astro Park, I tend to set up on the grassy terrain. You want to avoid the asphalt and sidewalks because the heat can rise from there and cause some unnecessary distortions. And also if there's any buildings in your area, you want to try to avoid shooting the planet over key areas of those buildings. So you want to avoid any chimneys or AC and heating units because once again, the heat from those can cause unnecessary distortions. The next step is to choose your telescope equipment. You can use any telescope design to observe or image the planets, whether that be a refractor a reflector or a Cassegrain telescope. Now, since the planets are pretty close to us, astronomically speaking, they can also appear rather small in the field of view. So you want to use a telescope that has a large enough aperture and a long enough focal length to get the best resolution possible. Now, when it comes to aperture, as the telescope gets larger, it gets heavier as well. So unless you have a group of friends that are willing to help you move it back and forth, or if you have it mounted at a permanent observing site, it's gonna kill your enthusiasm pretty quickly. So I always recommend to get the largest aperture and the longest focal length that you can personally handle. So if that's 10 inches, that's okay. If that's four inches, that's okay. Although aperture truly is king, always remember that the best telescope is the one that's used most often. So for your camera, you want to select one that can record videos at a high frame rate. We take these videos and then extract the best frames where the seeing conditions are as still as possible and then we stack those frames to create the overall image. So for tonight, I'll be using my ZWO ASI 224 MC. And in the middle here, I have what's known as an ADC or atmospheric dispersion corrector. So where I am in Maryland, the planets tend to rise about 40 degrees above the horizon. And at that altitude, I'm still looking through a good chunk of atmosphere, which can cause atmospheric dispersion to basically distort the colors from the planet. 
So this ADC has built-in prisms to counteract the dispersion to bring back that natural contrast. And at the end here, I have a Barlow lens. So this will increase the magnification and the focal length of the telescope by different factors. So this is a two times Barlow lens, so everything will be amplified by a factor of two. Okay, so the next step is to set up the acquisition software. So I'm inside of Fire Capture, which is the software that I use for planetary astrophotography. And I first begin by doing my focusing routine. So I use the Batonoff mask to do my focusing. And I start by overexposing the image of the planet. As you can see here with this overexposed image of Jupiter. Then I use one of the planet's moons as a focal point. So as you can see, I put my mask on and you can see that diffraction spike pattern, just like how you would see that on a star for deep space astrophotography. And then you can adjust the focus accordingly to get the best focus possible. Now you can use the planetary features of the planet as well for focusing. If the moons are pretty dim or if the planet doesn't have any moons altogether. So for example, on Saturn, you can use the Cassini division for focusing. This is the black gap in between the rings, which separates the outer A ring from the inner B ring. You could also use the cloud bands on Jupiter, as well as the great red spot for focusing. On Mars, you can use the dark planitia fields, which are the black planes on the surface of the planet. And if you're using a UV pass filter on Venus, you can use the cloud bands to focus on that planet as well. So I have my Batonoff mask on, so I'm going to get my critical focus and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, everybody, so I've completed my focusing routine and you can see Jupiter bright in the center and two of its Galilean moons to the left side. So the one closest to Jupiter is Io, and the one to the left is Europa. So next we can lower the gain and the exposure to see what kind of image we can get. So there's the exposure, lower the gain. And look at that, the planet Jupiter and the great red spot is nice and visible tonight, which is really cool. So before I start taking videos, I would adjust the atmospheric dispersion corrector to make sure that I get the best contrast possible to pretty much fix the effects of the atmospheric dispersion. And then I would maximize my FPS, which is the frames per second for my camera. So you do that by moving these controls in the control section for your gain and your exposure time. So you want to modify this in a way where you have the maximum FPS possible on the status bar. So right now I have about 59, 60 frames per second. So for the gain, this is similar to the ISO function on a DSLR camera. So the brighter the image is, the higher the gain. So I usually like to make this as bright as possible, but air a little bit to the dimmer side so I don't have too much noise. So I got about 60% or excuse me, 60 frames per second. And when you move the gain and exposure slides, you then affect the histogram and you want to have these values between roughly about 60 to 80% for all three channels, red, green, and blue, if you can. So I'm going to adjust these sliders, tweak my ADC, and we'll check back in. Okay, everybody, so I have my gain and exposure set up, and my histogram looks good, and the ADC is all set up and ready to go. So now we can go ahead and start taking our recordings of our videos. So if you go to the capture section here, you can either choose a time limit 
or a frame limit. So I've chosen a limit of 5,000 frames. So it will record a video that's 5,000 frames in length. And I have it set in the AVI video format. You can also use the SCR if that type works for you as well. So once everything is set up, we can hit this red triangle and it will start the recording. So let's go. And it should start momentarily. There we go. So this is REC. So it's going to record a 5,000 frame video and then we can just review it later. So you basically want to take a series of videos and inside of that 5,000 frames, there's gonna be pockets of good seeing conditions where the atmosphere is as stable as possible. So we're gonna run that through a stacking software that selects the best frames and that will be our final image. So one last thing I'd like to mention is to try to photograph the planet at opposition if you can. As the name suggests, opposition is when the sun and the planet in question are on opposite sides of each other. So the earth is actually in between the sun and that planet, which means that that planet is at its closest distance to earth which will give you the largest and brightest views of that planet. So an easy way to see if that planet is at opposition is when the sun starts to set in the west, that planet should start rising in the east and the planet will be available in the sky for the entire night. And opposition only applies to the planets that are outside of the Earth's orbit. So that includes Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Here's a list of the remaining oppositions for 2022 at the time I'm recording this video on October 10th. Planetary astrophotography can be quite challenging in terms of the seeing conditions as well as your overall location. But if you apply the strategies that I've proposed in this video, you should be able to get a pretty decent result in my opinion. Perhaps even something like this. So those have been the steps that I take when I photograph a planet. And I hope it helps you in your planetary astrophotography. What's your favorite planet to photograph? And what are some of the techniques that you like to use? Let me know about them in the comment section down below. As always, thank you for watching Astro Park. And until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.